We'll be learning a few new concepts so that we can prepare ourselves properly for the pirate assignment. The first thing we're going to do is learn how to create an NS array instead of an NS mutable array. And we're going to use a custom initializer which will allow us to create the array with some objects already inside of it. Let's see how this is done. I've gone ahead and created a project called Prep for Pirate Assignment, and I'm going to be doing most of my coding inside of the view to the load method. Let's go ahead and add a return after it. And in order to create our array, we're going to need a few objects. So let's go ahead and create two and a strings. So we can say something like first string is equal to first string. And we can create a second string. We'll say second string is equal to second string. And in the past, if I had wanted to add these to some sort of container, I would have created an NS mutable array and I would have done add object. Well, we discussed before that there was this thing called an NS array which wasn't able to change once we created it. So let's see how that's done. We're going to go ahead and type NS array and we can say my array is equal to and we'll do our double F bracket and we'll do NS array alloc just like we've done before. However, when we get to the initializer, we're going to use a slightly different initializer. So we're going to type init, but instead of just doing init, we're going to scroll down and we're going to find init with objects. And what init with objects does is it does the initializer that we're used to, but it can also take a few arguments here. In this case, we can pass in our strings and create an array, which we know is an ordered list. And I go init with objects and pass in first string comma second string. Now it's really important that I add nil at the end here and what nil is it's nothing and it basically tells my array that I'm done adding objects to it. So I can go ahead and add my right bracket and a semicolon and let's print this out to confirm that our array is working and it looks the way we supposed it would. Let's go ahead and run our application and we'll be able to see that our array looks the way we supposed it would. So our array is a print, set of parentheses with two objects inside of it, and we have first string and second string inside of it. We can go ahead and create another array, and this time let's create an NS mutable array. We can say my mutable array is equal to NS mutable array alloc in it. And just like we learned earlier, we can add objects to my mutable array. So let's add uh, let's add my first string first, and then we can add my mutable array add object. Well, let's this time add an array so we can add my array. And finally, we can say my mutable array add object, and we can add second string. Now we go ahead and log my mutable array, and we'll get to see here that. In the second array here, in my mutable array, my first object is first string, my second object is an array, and my third object is second string. So we could keep doing this. You can have an embedded array inside of an array inside of an array, and this can keep going on and on and on. And it's actually fairly common to have embedded arrays. You can also do an initializer. So let's say my mutable array existed before NS array, my array. So let's go ahead and do this actually. I can go ahead and remove my array. I'm going to remove my NS log statements. And I can go ahead and move my mutable array above my array. And here I could go ahead and initialize my array with my mutable array. So I can do my mutable array, comma, second string. And let's NS log my array. So here we see, again, first string, our second object is an array, specifically it's my mutable array, and my third object is second string. Notice that to our console, and its mutable arrays and regular arrays look very similar. So you see that you can put mutable arrays into arrays, you can put arrays into mutable arrays, and that they both print very similarly to the console. 